Yavapai Broadcasting and the City of Cottonwood proudly present Inside Cottonwood, an inside look at the decisions and issues of the City of Cottonwood. Brought to you by Arizona Smile Designers. Here's Cottonwood City Manager, Doug Bartosh. Hello and welcome to Inside Cottonwood. I'm your host and city manager, Doug Bartosh, and I have an interesting program uh, today with, uh, I have a special guest, uh, Mark Schaefer, who's the Director of Communication for the Arizona Department of Environmental Quality. And uh, we really have a, a pretty significant uh, relationship and partnership, I guess you would say, and uh, certainly they're re uh, responsible or oversee a lot of the uh, things that we do in the city related to environment, I guess. So anyway, um, for a lot of people, they may not even understand what what we call ADEQ does. Mm -hmm. what, what do they do, Mark? Well, first of all, it's great to be here, Doug. Thank you Thanks. so much for the invitation. We, uh, we protect the air, land, basically the air and land of Arizona and water. And we have uh, three different divisions, uh, air quality, waste programs, and water quality that are are charged with that uh, responsibility. So uh, outside of the federal land in Arizona, Indian tribal land, we're basically the organization that's looking after all of these things. And, and certainly I know a lot of jurisdictions, if they do it wrong, kind of kind of shake and shudder when uh, ADEQ gets involved. And, and that's probably good because it keeps us all safe. Right. But we have a very special relationship with Cottonwood in the sense of uh, We've worked together for a number of years now on uh, a lot of our outreach events, and uh, it's been a wonderful relationship that we're looking very forward to continuing. And, and that's a great segue into the next uh, partnership event that, that uh, we've worked on a couple of times together now, and that's the, the e-waste uh, disposal or uh, pickup. I guess we don't really pick it up mm -hmm. other than to put it in the truck. But right. um, talk about the history of that, because both you and the mayor have worked pretty extensively to make these happen and it's really it's really been a success. Right. We started it in 2009 this program and we're we've collected something like 1.8 million pounds around the state, 75 different events and this is the third one that we've done in Cottonwood. But uh, the program was formed r right about mid-year 2009 because the state legislature was in the process of defunding recycling activities on, on the part of the state. So we were looking for alternatives to uh, uh, try to retain a presence while at the same time forwarding recycling concepts. And we came across this, this recycling partnership where we don't have to invest any state funds in this. It basically pays for itself because the vendors come, they pick up uh, the recyclable material, and uh, there's usually enough computers and uh, printers and things like that to offset the cost of disposing of televisions, which they can't make any money on. So it's worked very well. We've taken them to all the corners of the state, from Yuma up to the Four Corners area, and from Douglas all the way over to uh, Lake Havasu City. And uh, it's worked very well. Everyone's been very pleased with this program. And here in Cottonwood especially, uh, our event last year, we took in over 18 tons of material and something 410, 420 vehicles came to this event. And I was doing some figuring on it later on and we, we determined that we had the highest per capita participation here by the citizens of any e-waste event that we'd ever done. So, you know, kudos to everyone in Cottonwood. This has been a wonderful partnership. So uh, e either we're a community with a lot of uh technology and, and electronics or, or else we're, we're uh, kind of uh, hoarders a little bit. We, we <laughs> hang on to it for a long time. Right. One way or the other, it's good to keep them out of the landfills and, and get them recycled. And, you know, I think people would probably be curious, what, what is it that they recycle out of the electronics? Well, there's a lot of stuff. Um, in particular, the, the thing of most value is a copper wiring inside each of the computer units. As a general rule, you have four to five pounds of that, of that wiring, and that's five to six dollars on the open market now. So they do make money there. Uh, they make a more limited amount on the plastics. Uh, they take the motherboards and circuits out, they shred those, so there's scrap metal m money that they make off the things. But generally, they just take all of these various components and they bundle it down to their factories in Phoenix, and then investors, mainly from abroad, come over, like China. This is a very important destination for them as to coming and picking up 
various uh, recycled electronic products and they recast it abroad and do other things with it. So uh, there's a good symbiotic relationship here throughout. Yeah, that's great. And, and I know um, we talked a little bit about it uh, before the show is some people may have concerns if they bring a computer in, what happens to the hard drive? Uh, you know, can they be assured that, you know, it's, it's secure, how you guys handle it, and if they have any personal information on it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what we recommend uh, is if a person is capable and they can pull out the 10 or 12 screws that are involved, that they take the hard drive out themselves and crush it. And that's, a, that's the most secure way of knowing that you've destroyed the contents of your hard drive. But barring that and the fact that most people don't do that, what we do is uh, it's taken down to the, the factory of, the, of whichever company that we have co-sponsoring the event. And the first thing that they do after uh, offloading their uh, trucks is they'll take that in and, and pull the screws and pull the hard drive themselves. And there's a special piece of equipment that actually crushes a hard drive. So that process is done first before any of the other recycling processes are done. So we've probably gotten people excited about this about this next upcoming e-waste, and we haven't told them when it is or, or what time and, and stuff. And it's on uh, February 23rd. That's right. Uh, from 9 until 1. Correct. And uh, if you're serviced by uh, Cottonwood uh, Water Services, you should have received in your, uh, in your bill this month a uh, advertisement of the e-waste uh, event and also a map as to how to get there. And it's going to be in the same place where we uh, dispose of, and, and there's actually a map on the screen now, where you would come to drop, drop off your uh, cleanup materials when we did the uh, citywide cleanups. But it's uh, essentially straight up Mingus again, and, and you turn at the, uh, I believe it would be the second street on your right, and just follow that road out there, and, and you'll see we have plenty of space out there to, to handle the crowds, because we do seem to get very good crowds for this. Now, I know the other thing that you're talking uh, about providing, or you are going to provide, is uh, shredding, document right. shredding. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about that, Mark. Yes, we, uh, we added that uh, to our program last year in, in Metropolitan Phoenix, and it proved to be such a success. There, we, at times, we're taking in 10 to 12,000 pounds within two hours of, of the start of these events. And what, what's involved there is that people that have uh, kept their documents over time, income tax returns, any kinds of old papers that they want to get rid of, and certainly there's a lot of that going on now with uh, people putting everything on, on computers. What they can do is uh, bring this to this event, and uh, this truck that we're bringing in will probably hold 11 to 12,000 pounds. So, uh, you know, fingers crossed that we can accommodate everything that, that's taken in here. But what will happen is that uh, they have several trash containers that's outside the truck. So people can come and park and watch their documents being shredded. They'll, they'll put them in the, uh, the, the trash containers. And when a trash container gets full, they have an automatic lifting device that, that puts it into the shredder on the truck. So I, I'm very curious, uh, you know, the reaction to that because it's been very, very popular everywhere else that we've done it. You know, and, I, and that reminds me, I think I have my tax returns for probably about 12 years, and I don't think I need to keep that much. Yeah. But So I may be there to good, shred some good. documents as well. Mm -hmm. So um, the shredding thing is, is, I think you were saying, is something recent. You just mm -hmm. just started that program. Right. And, and what was the, the impetus behind that program? Well, the impetus behind all of our program is, given the current state of lack of money of recycling in the state of Arizona, is to try to come up with ideas that we can do for free where it's mutually beneficial to private industry, uh, the citizens, the sponsors, every, you know, our aims of protecting the public health and environment of Arizona, and also the aims of the city. because. Uh, in some communities, these paper shredding events are used as fundraisers for Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts and other organizations, and we, we allow that to, to go on. We don't set up our own free event if that's currently right. happening, but in areas that haven't had that, this, this is a good free alternative. It pro provides a public service for people, so it's been very popular, and we hope to continue it in an even larger form in the future. And, and then again, when we talk about electronics, you probably can't name them all, but I mean, just kind of a categories of what we're talking about. Right. Well, the main thing we, we take in, the, the number one thing is televisions. And this is something that we're very passionate about because televisions are the things that create the most problems for the landfills. There's so many of them. They're huge. Uh, 
many of them go back in the 1970s, even back wooden console days and things like that. So that is really what we don't want to see in landfills. And anyone can attest as to the initial cleanups in the Cottonwood area. They were finding so many of these things in the arroyos coming down from Mingus mm -hmm. and everywhere. So we target those. We offer to pick them up for free because those have been traditionally charged for in the electronic waste events in the past. So that's the number one thing on the list. Then the other things that, that we target, computers, uh, and by the way, 85 to 90 percent of everything that we take in is recycled. Uh, what's not recycled, uh, they might find a few pieces during the day that can be repaired and so mm -hmm. sold on eBay or something like that. But for the most part, just everything is recycled. So. Uh, after televisions, computers are the next most popular item, and, and those are completely recycled. Uh, printers, DVD, VHS players, all these kinds of things. At times they can be repaired, but for the most part they're also recycled. Uh, we take in a lot of cables and cords and various things like that. Uh, we also encourage people, another big service of this is, we encourage people everywhere to package up their like A, AA, and AAA batteries and put them in a, in a plastic baggie and bring those in because those also can be recycled. Most people don't know about that and that's, that's a problem in the trash flow so many of those things are thrown away. Mm -hmm. So we encourage people to bring those and uh, when it's all said and done, we have a lot of stuff. So it's a it's a great opportunity, really a great program. So again, January twenty or excuse me, February twenty third, nine to one, uh, up on West Mingus, right behind the wastewater treatment plant. Um, come out and join us. Uh, like I said, we have a great response, and you may want to get there early, particularly if you're uh, shredding documents. Absolutely. Let's go ahead and take our first break, and then we'll come back and talk about a couple other programs that uh, we're involved with it, with ADEQ. Everybody. I am Lou Ann Patterson. My family and I would like to welcome you to the Copper Star Indoor Shooting Range, Northern Arizona's premier shooting sports facility. We offer a 25-yard pistol range, a 50-yard archery range, and Arizona's only 100-yard indoor rifle range. In addition, we have a full-line gun shop as well as an archery pro shop. Come check us out. We're located at Highway 260 and Cherry Road, right next to Out of Africa. Looking forward to seeing you all. Hello, welcome back to Inside Cottonwood. I'm your host, Doug Bartosh, and I'm here today with uh, Mark Schaefer, who's uh, with the Arizona Department of Environmental Quality, and we're talking about a lot of different programs that protect our uh, land, our water, and our air. And uh, we just talked about e-waste, and uh, one of the things we were talking about kind of off screen was um, household hazardous waste. Um, every city struggles with this, we'd love to put on programs more often to encourage people to dispose of those properly, but it's just so expensive. But you have been a help with this, and right. can you kind of talk about, uh, you know, what the state of that program is? And sure. Uh, back when the state legislature was funding recycling activities in the state, uh, we had a lot of, uh, a program that was uh, devoted toward uh, coming up with a lot of recycling ideas and uh, much of the money that came into that program was devoted to the household hazardous waste collection in the various communities around Arizona. And it would be something like thirty to forty thousand dollars and th that would usually accommodate four hundred to five hundred vehicles when it come they would come to the various towns and at that point we felt like we had a, a really good handle on that problem but since the money went away four years ago, uh, it's been very, very hard for the communities to come up with any money on their own because the proclivity usually is not to uh, come up with any kind of taxing on landfills or anything like that. And so there's really not any revenue streams available for the communities if we can't come up with any state uh, funds and the federal government can't help out. So uh, what we're trying to do now in planning ahead, I mean, 
it's our hope that we're going to get uh, a reestablishment of the recycling fund for the next fiscal year. No guarantees, or we may have to wait even another year after that. But we're, we've been helping uh, on various HHW collection activities around the state by partnering and, and, and just helping people with our expertise as to how to set up the events and stuff like that, including the one event we had last summer uh, over in the Camp Verde area. Uh, they had 800 to 1,000 vehicles, and nice. it's, uh, this is a problem everywhere, yeah. and uh, we, we hope to really move in that direction with the reestablishment of funding. Well, and, and hopefully we'd be, certainly we'd be interested in continuing to work with you on that mm -hmm. and, and maybe do something regional with all our partners because if anybody does it, which you experienced in the county or Camp Verde, is everybody from the region has got something That's that right. they want to drop off. So it, it's a real challenge. Mm -hmm. You know, the other thing that, uh, I don't know if you're aware of this and our viewers may not be aware of it, but we have a... Uh, uh, a waste transfer station in, in Cottonwood where people can come and dump, uh, you know, um, landscape materials, construction materials, and just about anything other than hazardous waste. And um, But uh, we took over that. We used to have uh, a uh, company that was running it for us, and we took over and, and have our own personnel with the idea that, that we wanted to expand the hours, and we thought maybe we could do it cheaper. But what has come out of that is not only are we doing it cheaper, but our personnel are really coming up with some innovative ideas. And uh, just recently, uh, we started uh, taking metal out of uh, the stuff that was brought to the transfer station. And, and we're collecting the metal, collecting the metal. And uh, we sold it to a recycler for $1,300. And we also found out that we saved $4,200 in hauling fees to haul it out of there. And uh, so it really opened up our eyes to we need to begin looking at other things that we can pull out of there to, to recycle. Because, mm -hmm. again, it's just so important to try and minimize what we're putting in, in the landfills and recycle as much as we can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great story. And I, uh, Another program that was a casualty of lack of funding and, and cutbacks in state government was we had a, a very well-developed open dumping program around the state in which we were, we were conducting seminars regional like in Yuma and Graham County and various places. And we were going to do one in Flagstaff right about the time that the cutbacks happened, but I, I have high hopes that we can reestablish some of this because a lot of the stuff that comes in in open dumping are these kinds of metals and various things like that. And sometimes it's as easy as, will the county buy into something like that? Will they provide several huge dumpsters? And yeah. people will volunteer. And that's, yeah. uh, we, I, I really hope that we're able to reestablish a lot of that also here in the near future. You know, another program uh, that I know you've been involved in, which is a, a big program for our, our local residents, is Verde River Days. And uh, you, you've come up and uh, I guess you do some water testing? Right. We, we have a, a well-established water quality testing program in which we, uh, uh, it's targeted towards school children, primarily fourth, fifth, sixth grades in, the, in that, that age group. And what we do is that we have test kits that the EPA provides and uh, we, uh, we test for the pH in the water, uh, we, we test for, you know, uh, how, how thick the, the uh, sediments are, things like that. We test temperature and things like that. And we, uh, this is a great educational opportunity for the kids. They love it. And it really develops an appreciation for love of science. So that, that's probably the most important thing because uh, we have a number of hydrologists and geologists that work at ADEQ. They yeah. love doing it. They love to see the future generation, you know, pick up some of the things that they were taught about that age group. And it just really, really, uh, provokes a love of science. Right? You know, and that's that's so important too to create that next generation of, and just get that understanding of how important water is. I know we participate in the WET program with the county here to educate, um, you know, elementary school kids. Mm -hmm. We've even gone it now into the kindergarten uh, age groups and began to educate them about water, water conservation, mm -hmm. uh, those kind of things. So 
it, it, it really is uh, gratifying to see mm -hmm. how active not only ADEQ but our local community has become about uh, water education. Mm -hmm. Probably the kid, the thing the kids love most is the turbidity aspect of this because they can they can see the roiling, uh, you know, sand inside the water and stuff, and they get a really good clue as to uh, you know things about erosion and things such as that coloration of water, how much of it's coming down a Sycamore Canyon or whatever, yeah. and things like that. You know, and and we've actually gotten calls from parents saying. Uh, hey, um, you know, my kid was bugging me about turning off the uh, faucet. And uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. so your program's working. Mm -hmm. And so that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and take another break, and then we'll come back and talk about uh, um, one of the other real in innovative programs we've got going on here in the city. Come back and join us. Having a fire escape plan is very important to keep your family safe and together in the event of a fire. When you awake to the sound of a smoke detector and smoke in your room, don't stand straight up. Carefully roll off your bed and stay low under the smoke. If your door is shut, feel the door with the back of your hand. Slowly open the door if no heat is felt. Always stay low until you get to the outside of your home. Always have two ways out of your house and a specified meeting place somewhere outside your home. Home escape plans should be drawn up and rehearsed on a regular basis. This could be the difference between life and death if caught in a fire. Welcome back to Inside Cottonwood. I'm your host, Doug Bartosh, and I'm here with uh, Mark Schaefer from the Arizona Department of Environmental Quality talking about uh, various programs. And um, the next program that, uh, um, again, probably a lot of people don't realize how critical of a uh, part ADEQ plays in our water and wastewater systems here in the city. We've got to meet a ton of uh, standards and laws related to that, and, and we are now embarking on a new uh, concept for water reclamation, and um, that's our new uh, Riverfront Park Reclamation Plant. And uh, I'm, I'm going to talk a, a little bit to Mark about um, how intensive the permitting process is for something like that and, and kind of what you guys look at and, and um, just that whole process. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, it's a very rigorous process. And we, uh, like all states in the union, we, uh, EPA sets a lead on the kinds of things that we need to do. So uh, as a result of that, uh, our, our various... Uh, permitting processes like, processes like the aquifer protection permit and other things uh, like that uh, are very rigorous and uh, we we have to be really on top of the situation as to potentials as to that might create exceedances of the various contaminants and things like that but uh, here in Cottonwood uh, you all everyone here has had a very much an eye toward the future and this is really an interesting concept uh, that's coming down the pike now with your new wastewater treatment plan and we've been very involved with with all of you on that, and it's uh, it's very impressive as are most things up here. How Cottonwood keeps its eye toward the future, and you know this is a very futuristic plant, and it's something that we've been very interested in monitoring, and wish you the best of luck with. Well, and I, and, I, and as you and I had talked about, I, I think this for us really sets the model for how we're going to have to treat water in the Verde Valley. Absolutely. Um, you know, we're currently recovering about 66% of the water we provide through our wastewater system. And um, eventually, we're going to have to just reuse that water over and over and over again. That's right. And as you probably know, the, the whole wastewater issue has been very emotional up at the snowball. Right. But the fact of the matter is, is that Arizona really, really depends on treated wastewater throughout the state, whether it's golf course irrigation, uh, 
recharge, uh, you name it. I mean, we, we've had one of the most active wastewater treatment reuse programs in the, in the country for years. And in fact, one of the first things that came down the pike with wastewater reuse in the entire country was up at the Grand Canyon. They used treated wastewater to steam for locomotives up there back mm -hmm. in the 1920s. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that was the genesis of this, and it's greatly expanded beyond that. And here, you know, in, in places like Cottonwood, there's a great need for treated wastewater. Well, and certainly is is uh, where we're building it. It gives us the really a great opportunity to reuse the reclaim to water our sports fields, uh, potentially share it with. Uh, the state parks, uh, take care of our cemetery area, and um, not use water out of the river, which is currently what we're doing. We have a cottonwood ditch allocation, and so we pump water out of the ditch to water those fields currently. And, mm -hmm. and uh, so we'll be able to keep that water in the river, which is everybody wants to see. Absolutely. And, and use this reclaim water. And, and it really is uh, clean stuff. and. And I don't know if you're that technically savvy. I'm not, but um, we know it's it's grade A plus, which uh, is very clean water. Mm -hmm. And then we are also uh, removing pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. So in essence, this is really clean water. Mm -hmm. The way our statutes are, it it, it bans uh, full body contact with class A or it's or treated class A plus, but it becomes what is the interpretation of what's full body contact and many of the discussions we've been having in relation to the snowball is over that question. So. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. huh. And uh, you know the other thing and I'm, I don't know if you're aware of this Mark, we just recently again looking for every opportunity to use our reclaim water because um, you know we're producing probably about a million gallons of, of reclaim water at our current plant today uh, but we just signed an agreement with Yavapai College to provide them with reclaimed water for their um, their vineyards, and uh, it will start out probably at somewhere around 250,000 gallons um, a month, and build to the potential of around two million gallons a month mm -hmm. of water to water their vineyards, That's which again project. is appropriate uh, because uh, um, class class A plus can yes. be used for for agriculture. That's so. right. Um, so, but it's a great, great project. We'll save them a lot of money and, and really make, make their Southwest Wine Center even more unique in, in terms of uh, the wine making process. Mm -hmm. What a great idea that is. But I just thought I'd share that mm -hmm. with you. You know, the other thing is um, that I know we recently partnered on, we bought a, um, an old, I guess, recycling center junkyard in our old town area. And, and uh, actually didn't buy the junkyard, we bought the property that it was sitting on and um, recognizing that it was impeding economic development in our, in our old town area, which um, was a great investment because now our Cottonwood in our old town area is listed as one of the top 10 lonely planet destinations uh, in the United States. So um, that's a fan that mm -hmm. shows how much this has turned around, but Obviously, when the uh, junkyard moved out, we were still concerned about contaminants, and mm -hmm. and we coordinated with ADEQ in terms of looking for grant money to help us mm -hmm. not only test it but clean it up. Mm -hmm. Ta talk a little bit about that program and how that works. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, our Brownfields program is one of the uh, programs that we're most proud of that that we do. Um, uh, that particular project was, you know, fantastic. It, you know, it, it blew our people away in the sense of, this is really good investment of money because it's it's going to a historic district that's popular among tourists. I mean, it fit all the criteria, and we funded that to the extent of fifty thousand dollars to do some of the initial probing and seeing what's beneath the surface there. The Brownfields program, we we've done a lot of great stuff around the state in that uh, uh, Tempe Marketplace. That was a hundred sixty acre <coughs> landfill basically oh, no at one kidding. time, and we spent a lot of money in time and it became one of the, the premier commercial sites in the state of Arizona. Uh, we had a, a two or three rounds of brownfield funding up in Flagstaff and they developed their central transit center around that and uh, that that's a very beautiful area right now. Uh, 
We've, uh, we helped uh, even down the border uh, with Mexico, uh, Naco, down mm -hmm. in that area. There were some old Buffalo soldiers' barracks that were refurbished, and we provided the, the money to look at uh, how much asbestos was involved in various things mm -hmm. like that. And they were able to reestablish some of that big historical value down there. So, yeah, we were excited about the project here in Cottonwood. You know, unfortunately, um, it, it, we didn't require a lot of money because uh, they did come in and do a, a phase one um, study and uh, determined that there was a very small amount of hazardous materials there, which probably amounts to about a 55-gallon drum, and mm -hmm. it, it probably was um, coolant or, you know, battery acid or oil or something like that, and mm -hmm. so we're going to be able to get that cleaned up and get that area redeveloped, mm -hmm. but uh, thanks to you. And sure, your, that was a great know, program. Folks you work with. Well, we're out of time, Mark, and um, I, I just want to thank you for your partnership and really enjoy working with you in ADEQ, and we look forward to a very close, uh, positive working relationship in the future. Great. Thanks so much, Doug. Come back and join us again on Inside Cottonwood.